I just uploaded the most famous excerpt from um, A.E. Hausman's Shropshire Lad, uh, telling the story of Mithridates, the king of Pontus, who was famous for immunizing himself against poisons by drinking a hellish cocktail every day of small amounts of poison. Um, allegedly, he made himself immune to strychnine. I don't think that's possible, but... Uh, uh, you know, that was one of the legends of antiquity, that he always, uh, his relatives were always trying to poison him to kill him, or just his political rivals, and he would poison them. <laughs> he would just sort of go, what's this wine? Somebody would mention the vintage, and he said, no, 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 that's not what I mean. This is strychnine, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then <gasps> everybody would know what was up, and he would go, here, do me a favor. Could you taste this and see if this is actually strychnine? Because I think it is. And they go, they'd be thinking, he just drank that, and he's not dead. <laughs> and now he's handing the damn cup to me to drink it. I can't refuse. Um, it's one of those ghoulish legends that almost certainly are apocryphal, but, uh, you know, it makes for great storytelling. Um, and Hausman sort of says, this is actually the way to approach life. Never turn your face away from the ugliness. Look at it. Look at it and see it for what it is. Not with relish and not with horror. Um, just look at it. That's part of the whole picture. And at the risk of sounding uh, silly, that's life. <laughs> um, it's interesting, this business of delving into the darkness. I was pulling somebody's leg yesterday in the comments section of uh, one of uh, In Mendham's many misrepresentational videos of me. Um, where the fellow had visited Best Gore and said, look, this is reality here. And I said, well, yeah. It's, Maybe it is, but there are other reasons other than uh, trying to be honest with oneself uh, to visit sites like this. Uh, you know, the implication being that maybe we get our jollies out of stuff like this. Um, do we? I think part of us does, definitely. And what should our relationship be to that part of us? Should we hate and despise and, and try to eradicate it in us? Or do we indulge it, which is equally horrible? <laughs> um, I don't think it's a case of either. Um, either one, I guess, is a temptation. I rather suspect that there are those people who go to uh, gory graphic images of accidents and you know, maimings and decapitations and things like that because they enjoy it, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, and I suppose that there are those who go there out of just idle curiosity. How about going there to immunize yourself against it and just sort of say, this is the way that life is? Or at least it's part of it. It goes right to the heart of what I usually... Um, I usually like to talk about in terms of our relationship. What's a healthy relationship to the ugliness of life. Um, I go through Tantra. They use horrific images to sort of say, like it or not, this is reality. And you have the option of liking it or lumping it. It's up to you. Um, a guilt-based ethical system like we have says, how dare you not be shocked and appalled by this, you horrible monster! And again, you know, it's, uh, are you sure these people aren't talking to themselves, or at least part of themselves? Mm -hmm. Are you sure that these people aren't trying to fight the part of them that approves of all of this by attacking you, um, as somebody who's rash enough to admit that that's part of who we are? Um, uh, again, if we follow the um, if we follow the advice of nature when you're fighting demons you should be very careful not to become a demon um, 
And when you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gaze back into you. Now, fighting demons, I wonder what he means by that. What Nietzsche would say uh, fighting demons is. Um, in my view of things, or one of my views on that issue is, you gotta, you can't turn your face away from things like this. Um, I walk through the streets of my city an awful lot, and there's an awful lot of street people, an awful lot of hard scrabble, busted down winos. Um, a lot of people simply cannot get used to it. I've uh, seen people's reaction to it, who the sight of a, I don't know, someone who's been sniffing glue for several years. I don't know, I don't think you can actually live that long. But anyway, you know, they've got mucus running down their face and no teeth and, you know, crude tattoos on their face or whatever. People look at that and, or that person, you know, it's, it's a human being, um, as worthy of respect as any other. And um, they sort of think this ought to be blotted from sight. Um, I've actually had conversations with people who've said blatantly, these people shouldn't be allowed here, they're making my world ugly. <laughs> what do you mean they're making your world ugly? Your world is ugly. As, as a matter of fact, I, I would probably say that the people who complain about it are actually making my world ugly by trying to turn it into a nice, sterile, uh, suburban thing uh, with a Starbucks and a McDonald's on every corner and a big smiley face pasted on everyone's face and leave it to Beaver as the role model for everything. <sighs> no, thank you. <laughs> um, I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to read um, Emil Choran. Um, I said Kiran yesterday. I pronounced it the Irish way, or actually I mangled an Irish pronunciation of the name. I guess it would be Koran, or Koran, uh, the way it would be pronounced in Irish. So, anyway, I'm sure Romanians are used to having their names mispronounced. There's another fellow that I like um, in that vein, Charles Bukowski, although his name is not that difficult to pronounce. He's German as opposed to Polish, actually, although he's if he's an American. Um... <clears throat> He certainly doesn't turn his, his face away from life's ugliness. <laughs> uh, he seemed to deliberately dive right into it. Uh, he saw the American dream. He said, this is, in one of his metaphors, a steaming pot of shit. I don't want any of this. Maybe it's not nice to choose to live on skid row and be drunk all the time get into fist fights that he usually lost. But in his view of things, that was something of a victory. That was something of a... At least he faced life the way it, the way it actually was. He wasn't trying to sugarcoat anything. And he had, you know, some compassion in him. Uh, he, had, he certainly had a very self-deprecating view of himself. Um, called himself a coward and a hypocrite and all this kind of thing. And I think, and in as much as those words have any meaning, he was a coward and a hypocrite in many ways. Um, so are we all, aren't we? Um, why would we, why do we seek out the sordid, the disgusting, um, the seedy, or the frightening, the horrific, and the disturbing? That's part of us. Um, I think people are afraid of being overwhelmed by it. They think that if you get into this stuff, pretty soon you're going to be the one who's walking into a high school with a you know, couple of 12-gauge pump actions and you know, some handguns. Um, I don't think so. I think that if you take it properly and in a disciplined fashion, the way Hausman said Mithridates did, you'll, quote-unquote, die old. It will never overwhelm you. Um, or there's a far uh, decreased chance of it overwhelming you, I'll put it that way. It's when you repress these things that they become dangerous. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned to uh, everybody I'm going to read um, some Choran uh, in the next few days. I just like to sort of caution people. I tend, as I say, to get an optimistic view out of these things, or at least um, sort of thinking, ah, yes, my, um, my world, my gyroscope has been righted because all this relentless positivity and 
uh, phony upbeatness that I see in the world all the time gets me down sometimes. I like to see it corrected. I like to see balance in the world, or balance in my perceptions of things. The negative dark stuff, um, provided it's intelligently written, or intelligently produced, makes us more human and makes us stronger. Mithridates, he died old. 